Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday, May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I had already planned my project for today, or I would have done something for Cinco de Mayo. But um, I didn't. So <laughs> um, glad to see you. If you're here, say hello. I always like to chat with you if you're here. It's always nice to have some comments. And um, let me, hi Stace, let me know if you're doing something special for Cinco de Mayo. I am going to a grandson's baseball game, so that's kind of, <laughs> kind of thwarted any Cinco de Mayo plans that I would have. And there's no margarita mix in the place. <laughs> so, um, there's that. Anyway, um, anything else going on? Stacy, are you doing anything for Cinco de Mayo? Um, it's not Taco Tuesday. We had Chipotle last night, so hi, Kay. <clears throat> we had Chipotle last night, so we had our Mexican, um, our Cinco de Mayo <laughs> meal yesterday. Um, tonight we're having chicken, so um, that's what we're doing. Today's project is a brand, I'm using a brand new, of course, every, there's a lot of brand new things because of the, hi, Connie, I haven't seen you on here for a while. Hi, Donna. I was asking all the ladies if, um, what they were doing for Cinco de Mayo, if they were doing something, um, special. Chicken tort tortellini soup, that sounds delicious. Hi, Kathy. My sister's up in Canada, still in lockdown. My goodness. We had our second shot Monday, so I think we're free. No, we're not. But they're saying if you have had your vaccine and you're with someone who has a vaccine, you can take your mask off. Um, I don't know how you're going to know. So anyway, I don't know that much has changed, although our mayor keeps promising us that maybe... Next month, things will loosen up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> our mayor of Kansas City, I live in Lee Summit. They kind of, our county kind of follows what Kansas City does. So, it, or it, it has seemed. Hi, Kat. Hi, Kim. Wow, I haven't seen you in a while either. How are you? Anyway, I started to say we're using a new... Um, bundle today. It's the same one I used on Monday's project. Let me turn my camera around. I need to do this. Maggie is making her little nest under the bed, under the desk here, so um, I apologize for that scratching noise. This is the bundle. I'm using the hand pinned petals. I've been doing um, Monday's project was with that. And this is the, the dies that come with it. You get 14 dies. Um, the small flower centers the leaves and then the stamped images, the two large stamped images. And this fun little border, which I'll probably use a lot on a, on <clears throat> a lot of projects. Um, it's also in a suite of projects products. Let's see. Here is the paper, and I am going to use the paper today, too. It's just so pretty, and I haven't really had time to put in an order for some of the other newer papers, so I've been using this one a lot. Lots of florals. Very um, spring-like and feminine. This is, this is one of my favorite prints. Anyway, that coordinates with the hand-pinned um, bundle, but you can also get the suite. It's on page 105 of the annual catalog, and I can show you the pages now because we are, we are good to go. The entire suite includes the paper, the stamps, the die cuts, and the little genial gems, which we are going to use today too. And that is 6625 US. 
So um, pretty good deal for for all of that. You you can basically um, I think it's a good value. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> to get all of that, the paper, the stamps, the dies, and the gems all together in one. So when you're looking at your catalog, be sure and my paper's almost up. Um, pay attention to that um, product number. Hi, Mom. Kim says, just happened to pop on Facebook and caught the live. Awesome. So this is the first card. We're going to make two cards, and I'm going to use some watercoloring techniques today. We're going to make this card, and we are going to make this card. I made these two cards um, during a, a team meeting a couple weeks ago. And I thought I'd share it with you because I, I'm going to show you a different way to use these stamps and two different ways to watercolor. So let's start with this one. And for this one, I have my paper. No, I do not. Here is, we're going to use our stamparatus. I got confused for a minute, could you tell? <laughs> it's like, what? Thank you, Kim. Um, this hand pen petals, it's kind of a line art stamp. And then you have the extra little um, stamps to fill in, which I did on Monday. I used these extra little stamps. But today we're just going to use this line art um, image. And for this first... We're going to do a little embossing as well. Oh my goodness, someone's at our front door. <laughs> I had that turned off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I had that turned off. I don't know how that keeps popping up. Um, I wonder if my husband made an appointment <laughs> with somebody. We're getting ready to do some remodeling. So um, he, likes to, he likes to uh, schedule these things for when I'm doing this. Anyway, to do this, this is kind of a fun little technique. I'm going to put some watercolor paper. You definitely want to use watercolor paper. And I'm going to take some of our Stampin' Write markers. These are water-based. They're die markers, so you can use them on your stamps just like you would um, any of your um, inks that are not permanent. And I'm just going to color this in. Um, this is kind of cumbersome for you to watch, but I wanted you to see how it worked. It's a little hard to see because these are photopolymer. <laughs> I'm using the new in colors and these coordinate with our um, paper. This one's my new favorite green. I mentioned it on Monday and um, I haven't memorized the name yet, but I love it. It is Soft Succulent. It's just a real pretty green. It's kind of like our, um, Oh, what's that other green we have? But just a little deeper, and I just, I like the little, um, how it's just a little deeper. Mint Macaron. It's a little bit like that, but I don't know, more gray in it. Anyway, it's a very peaceful color. And I'm also using the Polished Pink for these big flowers. Is that what I did? Yeah. If you came on late, we were all discussing if we're doing anything special for Cinco de Mayo. I am not. I'm going to a um, eight-year-old ball game. <laughs> um, I'm in charge of getting a grandson to um, his ball game, so 
We're not doing anything special. We had Chipotle last night, I mentioned. So we celebrated our Cinco de Mayo a little early. So let us know in the comments if you are doing anything special for Cinco de Mayo. I did order from Chipotle. I'm trying to lay off the carbs. Um, I've been doing it for about a week now. It'll be a week tomorrow. Um, I feel a little bit better. I haven't lost a pound. <laughs> That's discouraging, but um, I think it's better for my... Um, my health that I don't eat so much sugar and um, carby food. So I have been feeling better, but I tried the Chipotle. Um, they have this new um, cauliflower rice. And I would think, so I substituted that. Um, I should have just gotten lettuce. <laughs> I didn't care for it. It was, I think the cauliflower absorbed a lot of the, the flavor. Okay, now we're going to get into the tricky part here. I am going to take a Stampin' Mister, and the more water you put on your uh, watercolor paper and the more water you put on your stamp, the more the colors are going to bleed. But that's okay because, where's my card? we're going to heat emboss over it so it'll define our um, our areas. Um, and then I'm also going to use my heat tool to see I've got kind of a bit of a bit of water on there. I'm going to soak up just a little bit. And then I'm going to give my little stamp a couple squirts. And you'll see how the, the colors are going to kind of bleed. Like that. Isn't that pretty? Now, um, I didn't use as much water on this one as I did on this one. Um, but if I sprayed some more water on there, it would, it would move again. But I'm going to leave it. I think I'm kind of liking that. Um, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to set that aside to dry and we'll do our second technique and then we'll finish that. I might have to get my heat tool out. Um, when you do use a heat tool on it, it does kind of move the ink. So I'm going to kind of let it all set there. But isn't that pretty? I mean, you get an idea of what, what is there. It's just kind of a jumbled mess of what's there. <laughs> Okay, for this one, this one's real easy. We're going to do something similar in that I'm going to take a piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to put my, I was going to put a mat down here. I'll put a paper towel down. I have some paper towels so my surface doesn't get so wet. I'm going to read some comments about the, somebody's making fajitas, cat's not doing anything. <laughs> um, I love fajitas. And Kim says it'll take a few weeks for the wait, but you always feel better. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm staying committed. So today my lunch was a little haphazard, but... <laughs> I did it. Okay, we're going to do something, a, a different watercolor technique in that I am going to use my watercolor um, aqua painter. And I forgot to pull the inks. Sorry, girls. Hold on. I thought I had it all together. Um, 
the watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! Um, carries is, let me look it up real quick. It is not eight and a half by 11. I think it's four by something, something. It's fluid 100, five by seven. So it comes in a pack of five, five by seven sheets. I think 10 sheets. Should have looked at that. 10 sheets. Um, okay, so I've got my um, watercolor paper. I'm going to take my stamp pad and kind of really squeeze so I get some ink in the um, lid. You could also um, pour some reinker in the lid or on a block. That works as well. Okay, I want to get this so y'all can see. And then I'm going to take my watercolor painter and I'm just going to um, find my spritzer here. <laughs> here we go. I'm going to add a little water to my um, whoops, watercolor paper. Kat, you have seen this because you were at the team meeting. <laughs> so this is a replay for you. I'm adding a little water on there. And let me look at my, my dye here because I want to see. I want a little green. Looks like over here. And I want a little green up here. And a little green over here. And if you if it starts running, you can use your little paper towel. Now I'm gonna add a little of the polished pink right in kind of the Kind of right here in the middle. I don't want these colors to run together too much because they're, they'll get muddy and look um, weird, grayish. I'm just kind of eyeballing where that dye is going to cut. Kind of making a little, <laughs> a little psychedelic design. And okay, I think when I did this for the team meeting, I did it a little different. I decided this was easier and would work better. <laughs> now I'm adding some pale papaya. So I'm using the polished pink, the pale papaya, and the soft succulent. So see, I just kind of made, um, if you've ever done baby the baby wipe technique, which maybe I should do that again. It's been a while since I've done that. It's kind of like that when you do the baby wipe technique stamping. This reminds me of that. You get kind of a psychedelic look. The less color you have, the more the deeper your colors are going to be. And the more water you have, the more they're going to expand and the um, paler they're going to be. I have a lot of water in my pale papaya. Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to set that aside to dry. So it looks like nothing right now. <laughs> but we'll, we'll do something with it. We're going to die cut it out and it'll look real pretty. Okay, we can get rid of all of this. All right, here's our first one. The colors kind of ran, but you can still kind of see a little bouquet in there. I'm going to grab my Stamparatus again.
and I am going to put this exactly where I had it. Looks like some of the ink came off of my Stamparatus pad, but I think we'll be okay. Um, I'm going to dry this a little bit, so I apologize for the noise here, but I want to make sure it'll dry real well. Okay, I think that's good. Now I need to wash my stamp off so I don't re-engage that watercolor paper. But isn't that fun how the markers did such a great job? So if you have some water-based markers or some dye-based markers, you can um, use those on your stamps. Don't use any alcohol markers like your Stampin' Blends or uh, like a Copic. You don't want to use those. They won't work for this. Okay. Get that real dry. Hi, Susan. You were at the team meeting too, so you, you've already seen this anyway, but yeah, enjoy, watch the replay. Good to see ya. Cat has never heard of the baby wipe technique. Well, I'll have to do that. I'll do that next week. It's kind of fun. I'll pick out a stamp set that'll work good with that. Okay, now I'm going to load this stamp up with some Versamark. And this watercolor paper is pretty porous, so I am going to do it another time. And I'm still, <laughs> I'm having trouble seeing it. I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to move my magnet over here. Sometimes those magnets keep the plate from going all the way. Um, um, to the surface. Okay, I think that's good. Cat says, how wet should your Versamark had be. Um, I guess you could just do a test um, on it, Cat. I don't have to re-ink mine very often. <clears throat> I probably should re-ink them more than I do. I have a, another practice sheet on the back. <laughs> Use that paper, right? You want it to be sticky, but I don't think it has to be too sticky for this powder to stick to it. Okay, I'm going to grab my tweezers. Once we get all this done, the cards are going to be pretty easy to put together.
Okay, can, oops. Can you see how we have defined the area now with that, how that color has run, but we've defined it now with our um, embossing? And we will cut that out with the um, folder here, or the folder, the um, die real quick. Make sure it's dry. Grab my little mini cutter. Turn it this way. Sorry about the table shaking. Okay, isn't that cool? Just a different technique. Then when we put our card together, I used a piece of that beautiful paper and I cut it just an eighth of an inch smaller. I usually would do a fourth of an inch, but I wanted to show as much of the paper as I could. paper again is called hand penned 12 by 12 designer series paper. It's really pretty. I'm putting it on an eight and a half by five and a half inch card base. I use a thick um, basic white. I like to use thick cardstock for my card bases when I can. So I'm just leaving the tiniest edge around um, from the card base. When I try and do a five and a half by four and a fourth inch and cover the card front, it just never works out for me. So instead, I'll just do a tiny little um, edge and then I feel better. <laughs> and then I cut a piece of watercolor paper because I just thought it looked better um, than use putting it on a piece of uh, whisper white or basic white. I just thought it's just a slight color differenti differentiation and so I did that and I popped this die which is one of the dies from Stitch So Sweetly which did carry over into the new catalog. I used the um, largest stitched scallop rectangle and I'm putting that on here with some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. There's my little experiment that went wrong. I don't know what I tried to do with that. <laughs> uh, I played around a couple weeks ago with the watercolors, watercolor techniques, and I, I don't know what I was trying on this one, but evidently I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't want to waste the watercolor paper. Okay, so I'm going to put that right in the center. You wouldn't you wouldn't have to use a die cut for this. You could just put a rectangle if you don't have the rectangle dies. And then I'm going to put my bouquet right in, uh, right there, and we're going to stamp our um, sentiment, which is congratulations from the stamp set. There's a thanks, anything is possible, feel better, friend, congratulations. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to use my little paper piercing mat. And I'm using Memento Black Ink on a little scrap of the Pale Papaya. 
cardstock. Apologize if I get my head in here, girls. I kind of messed up on that C, so I'm going to do it over. There we go. Um, I'm going to use these for wedding cards. I'm going to set them aside, and so the next time I'm invited to a wedding um, or a graduation, for a female, of course, then I just trimmed off the end of that, and I'm going to tuck it under my flowers. I got goopy. Okay, I think we'll just put it right there, and I'm just going to glue that right on the front. And then I just glued the flowers right on top of that panel. Thought about popping them up, but I just adhered them right down on there. So that's the card. Isn't that pretty? This one I had more water, so the, the um, ink is a little um, paler, is that a word? <laughs> more pale, and this one I used less water, so you can see some of the, um, some of the white spots in the background. This one, it kind of covered all the paper after the ink ran. So that's the first one. Now remember this one? I'm hoping this is gonna work, because I didn't try this out ahead of time. I just had it in my brain. <laughs> I'm going to take this other die, which is real pretty, real lacy die. And I didn't do two of these. I should have done two of these. I kind of made it too big. I might be able to get two out of here if I let my two, uh, let's try it. Let's see. I might come back and add a little green to this. That way I can get two out of this piece of paper. Now on this one, if you save these tiny little leftovers that you're punching out, you can do a paper piercing with them. I'll show you just a minute how I did that. I'm going to have to get my U-Pick tool out. Hook these out of here. They're so delicate, I don't want to tear them. <laughs> or I'd kind of take the brush to it. One might not have cut all the way through. So I might leave that one. Let's 
sorry about this. It's probably real exciting to watch. There we go. That's pretty good. Hi, Letha. Oh, my little mini uh, stamp and cut and emboss. Yes, I love that thing. I should mention, if you have a big wish list for the new catalog, during the month of May, when you join Stampin' Up!, they are giving you $155. They normally give you $125. $155 worth of product for $99 plus tax. They don't charge you shipping. So if you are wanting a um, die cutting machine, that's a good um, way to get it at a great discount. Um, then when you join Stampin' Up! All your future purchases are um, start at 20% off. But it, that is through the month of May only. It's just kind of an incentive, kind of a celebration. Now, if you save these little punch outs, I have another card to show you. Oh my goodness, what did I, oh here it is. You can do some paper piercing. So I cut this out of white paper and then I used those watercolor um, pieces and glued them right in the center. So it's kind of, kind of a fun little um, way to use those extra pieces and it looks really pretty. Okay, we need one more of these to make my card. I don't know why I wasn't thinking, but what, <laughs> what else is normal or what else What else is new? I think we can get another one out of here. It's going to be a lot of green. A lot of green, but I think that's going to be okay. We'll have some green and papaya. I want to make sure this will fit. There we go. Who says our flower can't be uh, soft succulent, right? No one's going to know. No one's going to know. This way I'll be able to finish up the card. Dog on it. I didn't tape that very good. There we go. That'll work. Is the video frozen? Is it frozen for everybody? If the video is not frozen, could you comment? Sometimes. Sometimes that's on your end, but sometimes it's on my end. So let us know if you're, um, is the video frozen? Sometimes that's my internet. Okay, so it, Letha, it must be on your end, hun. Okay. Hopefully, I'm gonna run that back through one more time. Uh, 
that helps. And if I grab grab my little sponge here, then I have to find my little picker. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this might help us go a little faster. Oh, that did help us go a little faster. Okay, turned out pretty. Um, there's not as much pink, but that's okay. No one's gonna know. Um, so for this card base, I'm using Blushing Bride. I pulled that color from the, um, the designer series paper as well. Look how beautiful this is. But I wanted to use something that was a little um, softer and less, um, what do you call it? Um, I didn't want to just distract from our dainty little die cut. So I used the um, more simpler background. And again, I cut this one at five and, whoops, five and three eighths by um, four and an eighth. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller than the card front. The card front is eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it at four and a fourth. Then I cut a rectangle out using the, um, one of the stitched rectangle dies. I believe it's the third from the largest. But like I said on the other card, if you don't really need a die cut, you could just cut it a rectangle of um, cardstock if you don't have those dies. I just do, so I like to use what I have. I did not pop this one up at all. I just put it directly on the card front. And then I'm going to put my little um, flowers on here. And I'm just going to take a little liquid glue. What I normally do is use a sponge, but I don't want to hunt around for my sponge. I have a sponge that I use purposely for these tiny little things. <laughs> I'm just lightly putting some of this liquid glue on more of the where I can. A little goes a long way, so as long as I've got most of it, adhered, I should be good to go. So I'm going to put one in this corner. And then we'll put this other one in the other corner. Um, I will have all the information up over on my blog, including the replay of this um, tutorial, probably very quickly, because I did a lot of the work ahead of time. So if you're interested in, in the technique, trying it out with some stamps that you have, I should have stamped my sentiment before I did all this, because if I mess up, you know. You know what happens. <laughs> I usually try and do my stamping before I um, adhere it to the front of the card. But we'll um, cross our fingers and say a prayer that it goes well. <laughs> I'm using the Memento ink again. And this is a get well card. I just wanted to use um, some of the sentiments from the stamp set. I like to use everything that I have. I love the little thanks. All right, y'all. Wish me luck. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my head in the camera to do this. Oh, perfect. And then I added the little um, 
gems, if I can find them. The genial gems. Y'all, I showed them to y'all and then I don't know what I did with them. Here's this card. They're here somewhere. We need those gems because it just looks so much better with them. <laughs> Doggone it. They're probably right in front of my face. Anyway, I'll use this one. I put on three of the genial um, gems to kind of doll it up a little bit. It needed something. It was a little plain. And then here's our other one. We could add. We could have added some of the gems there too. And then here's the one that I showed you that had the paper piercing. When we punched this out with the die cut, I was able to use the little pieces um, with another one. And then here's another one that I did um, a little differently. I didn't show you how to do this one, but I just took a piece of watercolor paper and I um, stamped with black embossing um, powder the image, just like we did on this one. And then I took my aqua painter or water painter and um, took the ink out of the lid like we did and I just painted inside of the the actual images and then took some blue and kind of went around the edges. So I, I actually painted um, with the ink on this one. And this is a, re I don't know if you see it sparkling, it's a retired um, embossing powder. I'm out of the black embossing powder. I need to get it, but um, that's a whole different look in itself. It's a little bit more within the lines, right? But I just painted that after I had heat embossed it. Okay, that is the class or the cards for today. Y'all, I am thinking about starting, um, if you're local to me, um, I think I've figured out how I can um, safely um, seat about eight people. So I would limit my meeting to eight. But... Um, I'm thinking about doing, um, starting some live classes again um, in my home. I won't rent the space out that I did um, up north because I don't think it's available anymore. But just to kind of get started back into the card classes, I think I'm going to do that. So keep that at the back of your, your hat. <laughs> um, Donna says the watercolor technique is great for those lacy cutouts. Yes, isn't that pretty? Um, anyway, I'm just dying to get together with people and I'm dying to see faces again. So, um, if you're local to me, keep an eye out. I'll be, um, making some announcements. It won't be until June. I need to get organized and uh, hopefully our home remodeling project doesn't get in the way of my, my desires, but, um, but I'm, I'm just really excited about it. So I will start, I will put, be posting signups for that um, with a limit of eight, I think. Um, I'd have two people at a six foot table. Um, I think it'd be very safe for us all. And we could, we could get back to um, stamping together. I miss it so much. Um, Thank you guys for all the nice comments. Thanks for joining me today. We will be back next Monday for Make It Monday. And I will, um, I'll plan on doing a project with the baby wipe technique. So tune in to that. It'll be exciting. <laughs> um, Y'all have a great rest of your day and enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.